What is up? What's good? What's going on? Um, make a, uh, oh crap, just as soon as I start the damn video. Um, sorry, I got a message. Um, so I think I'll just do a quick, uh, you know, looking for a load video. There's not a whole lot going on here. Ooh, this is new. This is new. Beach Island, South Carolina to Bessemer, Alabama. Picks up tomorrow. We're going to go ahead and request that real quick. Beach Island. I, I requested that really, really, really quick. <laughs> um, I, I didn't even, I haven't even really processed that load through my mind yet. Uh, it's a same day delivery, the 27th. Uh, wow, that that, that that's, that's the first like that's the first time I've ever been making a video and like a new load popped up and it was a, like a, a good load. Um, all right, so that that all right, the load's looking good so far. Let's let's look at the map here. Um, I am like right here in Lake City. I keep getting Lake City and Lakeland, Florida mixed up, and there's a big difference between the two. Lake City is up here at the 75 and 10 junction, and Lakeland is down here in between Orlando and Tampa. It's this big industrial park in between Orlando and Tampa. Why is my map not updating? Come on, map. Download. 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 I guess it's not... Uh, I don't know, because I'm doing directions, maybe? Alright, so... What path am I going to take from where I'm at right now to get to, um... Beach Island? So I'm going to drive over there overnight. Um... What I might do is I might just drive up 75... Um, is there a good way to cut, cut a, I could cut across, what is this, why the hell is this damn map not like, let me refresh the map, I don't know if it's because, oh there it is, now it's showing the crap, somebody is honking their horn like crazy outside. Does my internet suck this bad? Um, oh my goodness, this is this is annoying. This is really frustrating. I I use um, cell phone signal service, whatever you want to call it, for internet. It's a data only plan that I buy through a third party provider. It's uh, supposed to be high speed but you know cell phones uh, are really hit or miss and I'm at a rest area so I may not be in the best coverage area but sometimes the worst places for uh, cell phone like data speeds is in major cities um, like whenever I was in Auburndale at the loves there uh, my internet sucked and I think it's because there were so many people at the truck stop using it all right, to get to Beach Island from where I'm at, right here, I, right here is Lake City. Um, I'm roughly in this area. I am like 30 miles south of the I-10 junction, I think. So what I might maybe do is... Um, I'm not sure what would be the best path to do this. To go over to Jacksonville and take 95 up and then cut across. Or to take 75 up and then cut across on the 20. It looks... It 
if I take 75 all the way up, then it's, I can do interstate all the way. Well, no, I can't. Either way, it looks like I'm going to be taking highways. I mean, I could take interstate, but I would have to go all the way over to Atlanta and then cut back across. Huh. Let's see. Let's see what it says for Gainesville, Florida to Beach Island, South Carolina. Ninety five. Oh, my goodness, this slow ass internet. All right, so I can go up to the ten junction, take ten over to Jacksonville. Take 95 up. And then it would be whatever the hell is State Road. So Highway 321. And I'm probably not going to take the, this exact route that they want me to take because this is a State Road instead of a highway. Uh, this is this is actually this place is going to be a bitch to get to. Um, I don't really trust. I'm not familiar with any of these highways or these state roads. I don't know what any of them are like. Um, where the hell did you put my phone? Ah, I think it's probably on the edge of my bed right here. Um, let's see if the load's been assigned to me. No. Let me go back over here. Um, one note. I need to uh, add a page and take some screenshots. of the load before it gets uh, deleted off of here. This, I was actually getting really bummed out uh, about the loads on the load board and then that load popped up. Now this is not an amazing load. This is not awesome or anything, but um, six two five nine four two nine. Okay. All right, we got the the load info there. Twelve thousand pounds uh, going to Dollar General. Dollar General is really um the Dollar General in Birmingham. I think I've delivered there before. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I take that back. It was, uh, the only load I've delivered to Birmingham was McCalla, Georgia, just outside of Birmingham. And it was to, damn, I forgot who it was that I was delivering to in McCalla, Georgia. But I remember I got there, and they were really rude about the appointment times. Um, I got there to see if I could get worked in because I got there, like, a day early. And I was just checking to see if I could get worked in and check and see, like, how early I could show up for my appointment. And they were like, you can show up at your appointment time. I was like, all right. Thank, thank you much. I'll, I'll get out of here and, and go find somewhere to park until then. They were really rude. And then when I showed up at my appointment time the next day, um, they told me that uh, they didn't have room for my trailer at that location and they told me to take it to a drop yard like six eight miles away and that really like pissed me off 
uh, I could have dropped the trailer at that drop yard the night before. Um, but, you know, I don't know. And uh, I don't think I got paid extra pay for that extra drop. I, I sent messages about it. I complained about it. But I honestly, I did not double check my paycheck to see if I got paid extra pay for that drop. That was back when I was a company driver. All right, let's refresh this page and see what the load status is up here. That load's only been on there for a couple of minutes. Like that load, right when I refreshed the page, that load was brand new. And I took, you know, that couple of seconds there to request that load. Um, it's it's a one day load. It's so like I'm gonna make like a thousand dollars. Well, not a thousand. Probably somewhere in the area of nine hundred bucks. I could run that through my spreadsheet, but um, Atlanta going down to Medley. So they're starting to dump loads onto the load board right now. The loads seem to come in batches. You know, there will be nothing happening on the load board, nothing happening, nothing happening, and then all of a sudden they dump loads. I don't know why it is that way. Uh, maybe, you know, they get new loads in and they try to get them onto company drivers for a while, and then if they can't get them onto company drivers, then they dump them onto the load board. They're like, okay, just go ahead and dump them on the load board for the, the owner-operators. I don't know. I'm, I'm always going to be suspicious that there's some shady shit happening behind the scenes. You know that like it's in their uh, best interest to put the best loads onto company drivers because company drivers are paid nothing to move the load. If they put the load on somebody like me, I get a percentage of the load. Um, you know, if they put a $20,000 load, and I'm, I'm, you know, using an extreme example, if they put a $20,000 load on a company driver, they're paying that company driver the exact same amount to move that load as if it's like a $500 load. So their labor costs are insanely low. Their profit margins are insanely high on that load. If they give me a $20,000 load, um, I'm taking a $13,000 cut off of that load. So pay somebody $13,000 to move this load or pay somebody, um, you know, $150 to move this load. Like we profit, you know, 13 grand extra if we move it with a company driver. So anytime I'm, you know, with... I'm leased on to somebody that has uh, company drivers in their fleet. Um, I'm always going to suspect that they're prioritizing company drivers for the best loads. Whether, you know, I can prove it or not, I'm, I'm always going to be suspicious of it. Um, I know that there are amazing loads at USA Truck. I've gotten a couple of them. I've gotten quite a few of them, actually. You know, $1,000 or $1,000, 1,000 mile loads that are paying, you know, like $6,000. You know, I had a $1,200 or 1,200-mile load that was paying $5,800 to go um, from Tulsa to, uh, like, Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. I forgot, somewhere in Pennsylvania. Um, like, 1,200 miles, $5,800. I've gotten, you know, several loads like that that, uh, you know, are like $5, $6 a mile loads. But the only time you see those loads is when the company drivers like freight is like doing so well that the company drivers cannot like uh, do all of the loads and I think it's just overflow um, I think that like those amazing loads are just kind of like overflow the comp they don't have enough company drivers to haul them all so they start dumping them dumping them onto the load board so whenever we get really busy we'll start seeing loads like that and, you know, you could argue that, oh, yeah, when we're really busy, you know, freight rates go up. No, no, that's not the case. I don't I don't think that fully explains it because, like, those loads are not on the load board. I, you know, I can go look at the load board in Tulsa, and there's not going to be any Chewy.com loads coming out of Tulsa. Um, it's not like the load prices change and the loads are still there. Those loads just completely fucking disappear off the load board. You're not seeing those loads on the load board anymore. And then all of a sudden, when we start getting busy again, you'll start seeing seeing them pop back up on the load board. Give me a second to blow my nose. One of the many reasons that I'm really looking forward to getting on with Landstar 
And that is going to crush me if Landstar is like, no, nah, you're just, you're not Landstar material. You're, just, you're not really what we're looking for, bro. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I've been, I've been like planning for three years the lease on here and you just told me no. Like, I, I have basically a perfect record and amazing work history. I, like, okay, the job that I had before I got into trucking, I had worked there for like 12 years. And since I've been in trucking, I've had a lot of issues with USA Truck. I've gotten near my breaking point a couple of times and almost left USA Truck. One of the things that has kept me here is that I want extremely stable work history whenever I apply at Landstar. So right now, if I apply at Landstar today, I can say, well, I worked for 12 years at this company. I decided to get into trucking, and I got on as a student driver at USA Truck, upgraded to a solo company driver at USA Truck, and then I switched over to USA Truck's lease program. So I've been with USA Truck the entire time I've been in trucking. Um, my my work stability, my work history should look immaculate. Uh, perfect driving record. Like uh, I already have a truck. A lot of people that, that uh, get into, um, you know, they apply to somewhere to be leasing on or become an owner-operator, they don't have a truck yet they're waiting to get approved before they get a truck i've already got a truck it's already paid off um like i should be like a perfect candidate the only negative would be recent verifiable experience and i'm gonna have the absolute bare minimum experience whenever i apply okay that loads disappeared off the load board so let's refresh this and see if it shows in my load list uh, and see if I got the load. I'm going to be really upset if I didn't get the load because I requested that load within like a couple of minutes of it getting put on the load board. Yep, I've got it. I got that load. Sweet. Um, pick up in Beach Island, South Carolina, Florida, Orlando. <laughs> They're starting the trip from my last uh, unload. That's the reason it says Florida, Orlando there, but that's not where I'm at. Um, okay. So now I should be able to get a fuel route. What the hell? Let me, let me go back. Begin empty at Amazon. Okay. Uh, all right. So it should just take a few seconds for it to pop back with a response on the fuel route. And I'll see what, what kind of route they're going to give me. All right, this load delivers uh, the 27th. What's the delivery on this? It's up until 10 p.m. So it's basically um, it's a drop and hook on both ends. And it's an all, on the 27th, I can drop it up until 10 p.m. So I can pick it up uh, as early as 3.30 a.m. and it delivers by 10 p.m. 324 miles. I'm probably going to be there right at 3.30 a.m. Um, all right, so... Um, all right, let's check out my message. Any... Um, okay. They haven't responded back with the fuel request. I just got spammed with messages about this being a critical account. And if there are going to be any delays, you have to... All right, there's my, my fuel. Um, there's my fuel thing. Those sons of bitches are starting me from Auburndale, Florida. So they're wanting me to take the I-4 over the 95. Want me to take the 95 all the way up to the 16? OK. 
Okay. 40 miles on the 16, and then the 25. Where's, like, right here is Highway 25. Um... Let me see what they're doing here. The 25 and then the 520. So they're having me take, go up to 95, take the 16 across, and then they're having me jump directly onto the 25. And I'm guessing that this Highway 301 is what they're talking about. Let me see, um, measure distance from there. I'm going to be on the 16 for 40 miles. Be, yeah, that's 40.5 miles. Up, uh, up, uh, clear measurement. Okay, so yeah, they're wanting me to take the 95 up, hop on Interstate 16, then take the 301 and then take that around onto the I-80, which the 301 probably doubles as Highway 25, and then take 25 all the way up to the 520, and then take the 520 around to my destination. That is the route that um, the that's the fuel route that USA Truck gave me. Uh, so that is. The route that they give me is like guaranteed 99.9% .9 truck safe. I mean, you always have to double check signs and stuff. I never fully trust a route. But um, that is looking like it's probably going to be the best way to get there. Uh, but getting from there to Birmingham is just I-20 straight shot across. That's an awesome drive. Like, that's going to be an easy drive. Uh, yeah, i got to drive right through the damn middle of Atlanta. But that's the reason I'm wanting to get there at 3.30 in the morning. If I can get hooked up right at 3.30, um, I might be able to make it through Atlanta by, like, 6 a.m. Um, Birmingham isn't going to be that big of a deal. Actually, yeah, Birmingham is a. I'm get. I'm thinking of Montgomery. Montgomery is like a fairly tiny town. Uh, it's a smaller city. Uh, Birmingham's decent, uh, but still, it, it shouldn't be too terribly bad. Get over there and make the delivery. Um, yeah. So what I'll probably do, since I think I'm right in this area, I'll drive. I'll drive on up to ten. And then I'll take 10 back to Jacksonville. And then take the 95 and then the 16. And then get off on the 301 to take 25 up here. And then I'll be at Beach Island. And then once I get loaded, I'll uh, you know take the 20 across over to Birmingham. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. I think we're solid. I think, I think everything's awesome here. Um, I am gonna probably leave. Let me let me see here. Let's do. Let's do a start location. Um. Oh my goodness! Come on, download, download, download. It's a piece of shit, man. It's not downloading. Whenever you zoom in, it's supposed to download a more detailed version of the map. There. There we go. There we go. Um, oh, right here. Rest area mile marker 413 northbound. That might be exactly where I'm at. Let me, let me check my GPS. There's a map. There's a map.
That is exactly where I'm at right now. All right, so we're going to do that. Add that stop. Um, I'm going to start it right there. We're going to get rid of Well, this is a nice alternate route right here. This will be a lot of highway driving. Uh, this looks like some two-lane bi-directional bullshit. That is the route we're going to take. And the total drive time on that is 10 hours and 8 minutes, 674 miles. Huh. That is going to be cutting it really close to something you can do in a, in a single drive shift. That is going to be cutting it real close. Um, if I leave, let's see here, let's, let's remove this. So 356 miles, five and a half hours, five and a half hours, 356 miles. So to get there at 3.30 a.m., I would need to leave uh, at about 10 p.m., So leave at about 10 p.m. Get there at 3.30. And take off driving. And let's say that I come up like 30 minutes short. I can't quite make it there. Um, let me see what the distance is on this load. This is um, 324 miles. 324 miles. So 330 miles. It's about five hours. So let's say from 4 a.m. I get here at 9 a.m. And I come up like a half hour short. A half hour short at like 9 a.m. Um, that means, let's say from 9 a.m., I could take a 10. I'll be done with a 10 by 7 p.m., and I will still have three hours left to deliver. So even if I have to stop and take a 10 before I get there, I can still make the delivery. Now, another option is I could just take off right now and drive on up to Beach Island. What is this bullshit? They've, they've adjusted the damn route on me. Um... 
I could just drive on up to Beach Island right now and get there by like 9 p.m. and take what would that be from 9 until 4 30 that'd be like seven hours seven and a half hour break so that would be half of a sleeper split right there I would probably just take a full 10. Damn it. I want to do night driving. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of a way to do this and do it all at night. Um, there's not a good way to do it all at night. Let's do something else here while I ponder that in the back of my brain. Let's put this at Birmingham, Alabama. Wait a second. No, let's leave this one at Mo um, Montgomery, Alabama. No, Mobile, Alabama. That's what that was set to. Well, let's change this from Lake City to Birmingham. And let's see uh, what loads are on the 28th or later. Right here is the start of the 28th. There are two main columns that I look at when I'm skimming. I'm looking at price and I'm looking at destination. Is there a destination that I like? I, I'm skimming through here. Miami, Florida, that's shit. New York, that's shit. Florida, Miami, shit. Chicago, Illinois, that's solid. Is it paying decent? Not really. Um, but I'm looking for any unicorns. Shit, just a second. Hello? Good? pick it up yeah yeah I plan on being there right at 3 30 a.m. when it's supposedly gonna be ready I hope it's ready at that time and then I plan on leaving and going straight to Birmingham at, right after I get the trailer 3 30 all right thank you much bye bye all right thank you bye This is a critical account, so she has to call and verbally confirm with me that I'm not dumb and I can actually, I know what the pickup and, and delivery times are. So she was like, I'm just calling to verbally confirm that you're going to pick this up by midnight tomorrow. And I'm, I'm like, pick it up by midnight? It delivers by midnight. <laughs> and she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, I, I'm looking at the details of the load. Yeah, it's a same-day delivery. Um so yeah, I just told her that yeah, I'll, I plan on being there at 3:30 a.m. to pick it up as soon as I possibly can. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to do that. But let's let's see what loads are coming out on the 28th. Um, I love that they put the markets in these loads now, so I don't have to go and be like, where in the hell is Rosenberg, Texas? I can look right here at the market, and it's Texas, Houston. It's the Houston market. Um, if that were the Dallas market, I might actually consider grabbing that load. Uh, but Houston, uh, I'm not really feeling Houston. Uh, Houston is way the hell south. Um, and I'm really avoiding northern loads right now because there's still a snowstorm going across the north northern half of the U.S., the northern half of the eastern u.s um like 
Okay, it's still on there. This is a load that I was thinking about. I was thinking about taking this load uh, because it doesn't pick up until tomorrow and doesn't deliver until the 29th. And the ass end of the snowstorm is going across right now. Um, so I basically would pick this load up, drive it north, uh, you know, four or five hours, and then I would set because, like, all of Kentucky is basically snowstorm tomorrow. Um, according to the national forecast that I was looking at. Um, national weather forecast. I was looking for other national weather forecasts because uh, they don't have anything for uh, Wednesday. Or no, was, was it Thursday? They didn't have anything listed for Thursday's forecast. I don't know why it is whenever you click on the national forecast chart, it just takes you to your local fucking weather. Whoever is running the site is bad. Man, the internet sucks. What the hell are my speeds? There it is. Um, This is it. National forecast. Let me see what my I'm getting like incredibly slow speeds like dial up modem speeds see here um, it could just be this location so I'm not gonna like email my service provider and bitch at this moment I'll uh, I'll see if I still have bad speeds in another area because this this could just be this this area. All right, so big ass. I, I guess it goes across more than just the eastern half of the country. <laughs> um, do they have tomorrow's forecast or is it still blank? It looks like it's still blank for tomorrow. And then day three. This would be um, Thursday, January 28th. Uh, the snowstorm should finally. So this delivers on the 29th. Or the one in, that I was looking at that was going to Ohio delivers on the 29th. It goes to Columbus. So uh, this snowstorm should clear out by the 29th. So I would basically just set in northern Tennessee for a couple of days and then on uh, the 29th, I would drive up to Columbus. That's what I would have done with that load. But then this load fell in my lap, and I was like, well, I don't have to set for two damn days waiting on weather on this load. I could just go make the same exact amount of money. Um, so that's pretty sweet. Oh. Uh. You know, since I just woke up and I'm wide awake, I'm really thinking about just starting driving now. Just go ahead and drive on up. Uh, okay, that is... That's the Pataskala, Ohio route that I was looking... That's, that's the load that I was just telling you that I was looking at taking. Let's close that map. We're not doing that load anymore. And here's the Birmingham... All right, I got it set to 1,200 minimum. That's good. Why do I have a weight set on there? I, I did not set a weight. This load board is so janky. I don't want to put those fields in. It Don't ever populate those fields at USA Truck because they don't fill out the loads properly. You put in a minimum weight, 
and you might have a whole lot of loads that don't show up because they put unknown they just don't bother filling out categories on loads they'll put unknown on the weights and stuff like that and you'll there'll be a bunch of loads you don't see all right so this load is same day delivery on the 27th so I need something the 28th or later I got this cheap ass load going from Memphis to Houston wasn't that just listed for a little bit more than that or did they it looks like that price changed did it change or is that just my damn imagination okay Lithia Springs Georgia to Medley Florida nope Syracuse New York Miami Florida Chicago Sweetwater Tennessee to Tulsa do I want to get back home um Sweetwater, Tennessee, uh, Birmingham, Alabama to Sweetwater, Tennessee. So that's up by Knoxville. What is the road situation? Is it interstate? Oh, yeah, we got an interstate all the way there. 59 to the 75. And then when I leave Sweetwater, I can just take the 75 on up to the 40 and take the 40 um, almost all the way to Tulsa. Oh, my goodness, this slow-ass Internet. So uh, that picks up the 28th by 7 p.m. And I get, like, so it's a live load in Sweetwater, Tennessee. Let's see what the load is. Appliance parts. Estimated weight, one pound. That's a lie. Whirlpool. Um, Sweetwater, Tennessee to Tulsa, Oklahoma. So that would have me basically the 30th. That delivers on the 30th Saturday. I would be able to get all three of those loads in in a single week. Let me throw these into the spreadsheet. And we'll crunch the numbers on, um, on this. Um crap I can't just copy and paste the very first load I'll have to manually enter so I will uh, flip you over to the spreadsheet and um, I'm gonna have to manually enter the very first load and then I can copy and paste the others so Nothing really matters except the last three, so 1280.89. Oh, and they added in a new column, so... There we go. And delete that one. Uh... So I'll put it right here. 1280.89 is the line haul rate. 7377 is the fuel surcharge. And the mileage is 324. So um, that's paying me $2.80 a mile. But I have double that in deadhead, so it's paying me closer to a dollar forty a mile, about half that. <laughs> All right, so now uh, let me go grab the other two loads that I'm thinking about grabbing. All right, just so happen to be on the page of the Sweetwater, Tennessee load. We'll throw that one in um, right here. And we 
go find the other one. Where, what the hell is the other one? Oh, that was it. That's all of them, right? Yeah, that's all of them. Um, I guess, yeah, I still had... Um, now, okay, so let's do this. Let's move that down a row. 1280.89, so 3.77, and 3.24. And then I had my original load, which was $5,000. Um, it was breakthrough fuel. Let me um, let me pause the video and get the exact details. I have to remote into my computer at home to do it. All right, now we're unpaused. Uh, we got the exact info in on load one, and I just got a message. Let's see what this crap is. During freezing temperatures, be alert for... Uh, safety is just sending out tons and tons of messages. It's getting really annoying. Um, and you can tell that some of the messages they're sending out are about somebody just did something. Like, they sent out at one or two messages about manual fifth wheel releases. They're like, you know, don't jerk on it and, you know, don't do this. You know, all kinds of stuff. You can tell somebody recently got injured pulling their fifth wheel all right so let's look at how much we're gonna make on this let's do equals sum of O nine through eleven O nine through O eleven so the total gross on the week for this week will be Fifty-four hundred dollars. That'll be gross to the truck. Is what I will make if I take those three loads. Um, and I can go home after delivering that last load, and I can get my APU fixed, and I can get my uh, service done that I need done. I need a, a whole bunch of shit done. I need to get the truck and the APU serviced. I need to get the APU worked on, and I've got a squeaky belt that's driving me crazy. I need to get a belt replaced. Um, so that will be a fairly solid week. So let's go ahead and request those loads. Let's make sure they're still there. Okay, this is Birmingham. Let's refresh the page. And we're going to grab that sweet water that's picking up on the 28th and delivering on the 30th. Sweetwater, Tennessee. That load's been sitting there for a couple of days. I looked at that load yesterday, so I don't think anybody's going to be in a big hurry to grab it. Um, 800 miles. Shouldn't be a problem. That'll be a two-drive shift load. And I have two days to do it so this is a warning message that you know this is one of the shithole companies that pays breakthrough fuel they don't really pay uh, oh shit let me switch this over to the browser um, I was just about to request this sweet water t to Tulsa hit the request button and you get this pop-up warning message this is just basically saying that this is one of the shithole companies that doesn't pay real fuel surcharge. Um, and letting you know that we have no idea what fuel surcharge they're going to pay. Let me read it. Please review the details of this order and confirm that you would like to select it. Please note that since this is a breakthrough fuel order, we will not know the fuel surcharge until after the delivery time, or after the time of delivery. Um, so we're going to go ahead and confirm. And let's look at the rate per mile real quick. Um, so my very first load going to Florida paid two seventy four a mile. Load number two is paying two dollars and eighty cents a mile. 
Now, the, this is what I am making per mile, but it's only on the loaded miles. It's not counting the deadhead miles. But this is what I'm making per mile. 274 a mile, 280 per mile, and then the last load is $1.52 a mile. It's not paying very well, but it's getting me back home, and I really need to get my APU working again. It costs me an extra $30 a day to $50 a day to idle the truck um, with the engine when the APU is down. Um, if I'm just sitting here for like 24 hours, um, then it, it costs upwards of $50 a day just setting for a full day. But if I'm only setting for like 10 hours a day, then it's, it's closer to, uh, you know, like $30 a day, but it's like, it's at least $50 a day, uh, $50, $60 a day for a full 24 hour idling and about 25 to 35 dollars for uh you know whenever i'm just you know running like crazy oh man um okay so this changed my um my entire fuel plan i was planning on fueling up in mariana florida i've only got a quarter of a tank left so let me um I think I'm going to top off at the TA in Jacksonville now. Let me let me pause this for a second and check my e email and see what the prices are there. All right, unpause and the cheapest place that I can get fuel is the TA in Baldwin. It's 242 a gallon with my discount. Um, so there's a TA in Lake City. That's like 245 a gallon. That's just north of me. That's basically right where I'm at. Um, and then, so 245, 242, uh, then there's a TA or a Petro or something. Um, I don't think there is one in Jacksonville. There's one in South Jacksonville that would be way out of my way. Um, but then there was like three TA and Petros up 95 and there's one in Savannah, um, and then there are there are a couple of them through here, but uh, they just kept increasing in price. They were like 245, 247, 255. So Baldwin, the TA in Baldwin is the best rate for fuel that I can get. So I think I might actually just take off here pretty soon and go ahead and drive up to this place. It might be a pain in the ass to find some parking. Let's uh, let's look in, at the the map and look in, and see what it's. Let's look at the exact address of this place. So, two forty six, Old Jackson Highway five. Kimberly Clark truck check-in man they've got the truck check-in marked on there nice they do not have overnight parking listed let's take a look and see what this place looks like what does this area look like so I'm pretty sure I'm going to be coming in from the north Yeah, that's the 520 right there. So I'll come off the 520, get onto the 28, and then drive down here. So I 
I just need somewhere to park for like four or five hours. There's a McDonald's that has truck parking right here. Oh yeah, they've got a whole bunch of parking. So, um... And what the hell is this? First Citizens Bank and it looks like some kind of like abandoned uh, shut down place right here that has a lot that is starting to get overgrown and stuff and looks like a utility company is using it to park some utility vehicles so if McDonald's is full I can drive over here and park in this spot um, for, I mean, just for four or five hours in the middle of the night shouldn't be a problem. So, yeah, that's right in front of the damn Kimberly Clark. What I can do, what, what I might do when I first get there, and this is something that's under construction. They might be creating some kind of parking lot right here of something. Um, that might be built by now. What I can do is I can go drive down to Kimberly Clark when I get there and get the phone number for this particular Kimberly Clark so that I can call them and verify that the load is ready at 3.30 a.m. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to bother driving down there or if I'll just park there at the McDonald's. I might get me something to eat there at the McDonald's. Who knows? Now that I'm able to freeze my leftovers, I'm not in a rush to eat them. Uh, I, Freeman Trailer Park. Freeman Trailer Park? Oh. That's a trailer park. I was, I was thinking parking trailers. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's a parking thing there? Oh, no. Um, Gerard C. Falk. My home. So somebody put their house on Google Maps. I don't know what the deal is with that. Yeah, so that's that's looking like a plan right there. There's a McDonald's right outside the Kimberly Clark with a whole bunch of truck parking. Um, and it's probably not going to be too overrun because it's way off the beaten path. The only people that are going to be parking there are probably going to be people going to Kimberly Clark. So this is looking pretty sweet. I might go uh, hop behind the wheel and start driving right now. Maybe I'll, I'll start making a driving video as soon as I get behind the wheel. The only thing that sucks is if I leave right now, I think I'm going to be hitting Jacksonville during rush hour. But uh, I'm starting to think that I should go ahead and leave now. That way uh, I'm not pushing it up until the last minute on the delivery because this is going to be really pushing my limits. Um, doing 650 miles in a drive shift is not easy. So uh, setting up a sleeper split... Um, and you know getting the hours knocked out even earlier and stuff that 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 makes me a lot more comfortable doing this drive to get started earlier uh, I have a lot more flexibility in what I can do so I think that's what I'm going to do is uh, let me just verify that um, ah, ah, crap um, I need to take screenshots of this real quick before I forget so Sweetwater Tennessee Um, where were we at? Where were we at? Details. There we are.
I always want to take screenshots before I refresh the page. I have uh, messed up before. 6, 2, 3, 70, 50. Okay. Alright, now let's refresh this page and see if I got that load. Yep, so I've got the sweet water assigned to me. So I've got all the loads on me now. Well, this turned into a not-so-bad day. Um, I was starting to get bummed out. So the first load is Kimberly Clark. The second load is Whirlpool. And they don't have a weight listed on the second load. Just listed as one pound. And I'm just going to check real quick and just see what's coming out of Oklahoma City. There might be a load uh, coming out of Oklahoma City, uh, you know, next week. I'm going to be there this Saturday. There might be something, you know, February 2nd or 3rd that's coming out of Oklahoma City that's doing really amazing. Holy crap. There's some good loads. Did I? Hutchinson, Kansas. Hutchinson, Kansas. Fort Worth. Oh, my goodness. Oklahoma City is the place to be. It's going to Surprise, Arizona. This is a decent load. Uh, Woodland, Washington. Portland, Oregon. Uh, that, uh, that's, you know, okay. Where, what is this Hutchinson, Kansas place that we're getting loads out of? Paper rolls. Oh, those are accounts that I don't want. 550 in breakthrough fuel. Uh, 53 foot food grade. Please have driver ID themselves as picking up for USA truck. Why don't they have that note on the other one? 53 foot DV dry van. Uh, but they don't have all the other notes on that load. So this looks like some new business that they're working on getting. Um, I'm up for any business in the Oklahoma City area. But paper rolls, oh my goodness. I'm not a big fan of hauling heavy ass paper rolls. Especially going, man, whoever gets this load, I, I feel sorry for him. Going to Portland, Oregon from Kansas, that is a lot of mountain driving with some heavy-ass paper load. That sucks. I mean, it's paying a decent rate to go out west. Like, stuff that, that goes out west usually doesn't pay worth a damn. That's like, a, ugh, that's that's decent. That's decent to go out west. All these Rogers, Arkansas loads are so damn cheap. You can get loads out of Spring Hill, Kansas, going to pretty much the same place. It's just a, you know, like 150, 200 miles away on the pickup, and they pay way more money. Nobody should haul that crap out of Rogers, Arkansas. That's I think those are Procter and Gamble loads. And what's hilarious, yeah, it's Glad Manufacturing, a Clorox company, uh, that's a subsidiary of Procter and Gamble. Uh, what's what's crazy is Spring Hill, Kansas, over there by Kansas City, that pays a lot more going to the same places, is Procter & Gamble as well. So we would need something that picks up way down here, like minimum, like, yeah, I could do 31st, but I need to put my truck in the shop. So this or later. Are there any amazing loads? I'm not seeing anything incredibly amazing.
Fort Worth to Sacramento. That is some cheap crap. Dollar a mile. No, nothing worth like grabbing this far in advance. Like if there was like a, you know, five, six thousand dollar load sitting out here, then I'd go ahead and request it right now. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, trip plan this out. I'm going to put, you know, program all this into my GPS and take off rolling here in uh, the next few minutes. Um, oh, crap. I forget. The time here on my laptop is 3.20 p.m. That's central time. It's actually 4.20 p.m. So it's an hour later than I was thinking it was. So um, if I leave, by the time I make it to Jacksonville, it should be around 6 p.m. So I will be catching like the ass end of rush hour. Um, so I think I might actually be all right with rush hour going through Jacksonville. Um, because I've got to stop and get fuel before I get there. And that's, you know, going to take a few minutes Uh so yeah, I'll, I'll be getting there probably closer to 6 p.m. or later. So um, yeah, I think I'll be all right. I mean, traffic's gonna suck. It's gonna suck to be driving during the day, but um, you know, I'll be starting my day probably. I'll, I'll probably be ready to go in the next 20 or 20 to 30 minutes. So I'll be leaving at about 4:40 to 4:45. Um, and it's going to take me about, what, five hours to get there. So I'll be getting there around 10 p.m. One second here. Alright, sorry, I got a message from somebody uh, in one of my games that I play. Uh, an old game called Ashron's Call. I'm trying out a new server uh, that somebody started up recently. Alright, I think we're ready to roll. We got plans. We're, we got loads getting us all the way back to the house. And it's going to make this a... Um, a pretty damn big week. Um, I average gross to the truck about 4700 a week. And what was that? Let me double check the spreadsheet. This is going to be $5,400 gross to the truck this week. Now, my actual paycheck um, is probably going to suck. I mean, it's still like $5,400 gross. Um, my expenses are probably going to be like $1,000. Like, my expenses with fuel and everything are usually right around a thousand bucks a week um so of the fifty four hundred dollars forty four hundred of that is going to just come to me that's that's going to be my profit after expenses going to be about forty four hundred dollars for the week but but i'm going to have additional abnormal expenses because i haven't had a paycheck in like two damn months so i've got two months of insurance payments um tolls Everything else that um, I haven't paid off because I haven't had a paycheck in the last couple of months, all of that stuff that, that's accumulated, my IFTA, anything, all that's going to come out of my, this is going to be my very first paycheck in like two months. So it's going to have a lot more deductions than normal out of it. So it's going to be more than a thousand bucks. It's probably going to be closer to two thousand dollars that comes out of this check. So instead of me getting forty-four hundred dollars pay for this week, I'll probably be getting closer to thirty-four hundred dollars pay for this week, which is still solid. That's still pretty good. And I'm hoping that I'm not going to be sitting at home for very long. I would really, really, really like to just get my damn truck worked on and hit the road again because I, I, I would, I would really like to get at least one or two more paychecks before. Um, I start working at Landstar. Um, so I'm still a couple of weeks away from even applying at Landstar. And then it takes like 30 days for them to qualify you. 
And then after you're qualified, that doesn't mean you're like leased on. Um, they have to set an orientation date after that. And I've heard that it can take, you know, two to four weeks for them to have an opening in an orientation. So, I mean, you're still, it could be two and a half months before I'm in a, in a, a, a an orientation class at Landstar. Um, so I want to try to stack up some money between now and then. I've also got, you know, income tax crap, um, around the corner. I want to save up some money. Um, I don't think I'm going to have to give the government too terribly much because I was able to do a lot of expenses last year, getting a lot of work done on the truck. So, um, I shouldn't have a lot of taxable income but I am going to have a, a decent amount of taxable income. So I need to have at least $10,000, you know, ready to pay in taxes. It could be more than that, though. Uh, but bare minimum, I need like ten grand set aside for taxes. So anyway, I think I want to end this video. Uh, man, this thing's an hour and 11 minutes long. Damn, on this shitty internet connection, it's going to take forever to upload. Hopefully my internet gets better. Um, but we'll start this upload and, uh, then I'll probably start a video driving as soon as I start driving. But, uh, anyway, that's the plan. I'll be back home Saturday. It is Tuesday right now and I'll be home on Saturday. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.